Hello guys, this is Goodlike, and this is the series in which I try to write an application to replace and improve upon the functionality of the YouTube sub box. Last time, a week ago, we uh, returned after a bit of a hiatus and started writing some code and some tests. As I was editing, I noticed a few things that could be improved, so I created a README and a to do file, which are usually pretty common. Uh, I also moved uh, the repository to GitHub proper. Uh, for today, we shall simply continue where we left off last time with the uh, absurdly, ridiculously large amount of tests here. Well, it's not the amount of tests that's large, it's the tests themselves that are uh, a veritable mess. But everything should still work, I believe. Alright, one thing that we can do quickly is instead of using protected, we can just use package protected. Well, which is uh, just as good and achieves the same result, but uh, it doesn't have a word, which is nice. And then we can go up the list of to-do things. Okay, so assert the title is not null. That's true. Uh, when we are looking here, we just take the title and say get title. But if the title is null, this will produce a null pointer exception. So ideally, we should assert that that is, in fact, not happening. We could write a test for that even. So let's actually take this and say, okay, yeah, we input an actual value, but the titled object is null. Quite a flagrant abuse of this API. This should produce a null pointer exception. I prefer a null pointer for a null pointer. And it should contain title and null. In fact, in this case, it should be title object. I want to be very specific about the message type, and this will not produce the error as we expect it. To solve this, we will have to just check the title. Well, actually, we can use uh, this method, which achieves the same result for now. So this should now pass the test, and we can move on to better things. We're going to leave the improvement of all of this code after I'm done with all of this. So we've, we've done this assertion. Uh, and this is the next thing, API to check for blankness in one step. So very often we do this, oops, we do this. And um, actually, we have a lot of tests with very similar assertions at the moment, which are just refactored out. And what I thought about is that we constantly have to repeat, 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 which is a bit of a pain in the butt. So here's what I think makes a lot more sense is if we refactor this code somehow such that the test will pass in the null and blank values for us, and we just provide what to pass the... God damn it, stop it until the idea. What to pass the values into and everything else, like the title or whatever. Which will be a lot simpler uh, for us to deal with. Uh, to do that, I think we should do that in a separate class and even package called ass asserts. It will live in our test. Folder. So what is this assertion? We want it to be public static uh, void assert. I suppose it makes sense to do invalid blank because we're going to be passing what exactly is the blank thing. And this would be uh, input name. Sure, doesn't matter. And then we want a consumer of string. Yeah, we need to, we need a special class for this, which we will create for now quickly. It's an interface called throwing consumer, which has a type. And really all it does is uh, do nothing, but accepts a uh, type 
of some kind and uh, throws throwable. Some kind of throwable. What does this uh, allow us to do is make sure that we can test even the cases where this can throw uh, unchecked exceptions. Even though I don't intend to use those, uh, other APIs can use those, so you have to kind of keep up with those. Let's call this blank averse call. Yeah. Or consumer. Essentially, we expect this consumer to be averse to blank, and uh, we will be using essentially an assertion similar to this. I hate this so much. Why do you keep doing that? IntelliJ idea. So we will assert that the legal exception of a legal argument is thrown by passing into the blank verse consumer value no. Right? With message containing input name. And uh, we can also specify that we want it to contain blank. Why not? And then we can do exactly the same thing with a blank value or whatever. Now, this is uh, the kind of duplication we can actually work around because we can just say this is input. And we can just say, hey, input name, blank verse consumer. Yeah, let's keep the structure the same. Assert in that blank input. And in fact, what we can do is just have this be a multi-dimensional array and then we can pass it like this except now input input is inputs instead and we do inputs iteration we iterate over all the inputs and voila so this assertion for some reason yeah it's imported due to the copying this right so this assertion given some kind of input name and some kind of a consumer of a string will check multiple blank values and assert that these values are in fact not allowed. Hmm. At this point, since all that we do is just do this, it hardly even makes sense to use this method anymore. Uh, we just would prefer this to be something more like this is list. So it's cleaner, but this can also be a constant because we always going to use the same blank strings. So let's call it blank strings. It's a private constant, put it at the bottom. And now that's very clear for every, let's say blank string and blank strings, make this assertion. Unfortunately, we can't use an immutable list because immutable lists don't allow null. We can even add some more if we want to, just an empty string and a completely blank string. So, of course, in reality, all of these will be taken care of by one call. This helps us by eliminating, for example, duplication like this. We can now completely eliminate it by just using this asserts assert invalid blank, uh, call it title and just make the call input and the call would be titled input input this can in fact be replaced with a lambda sorry with a method reference which is very nice and that's it we can even statically import this and this does exactly the same check, but with one simple call, which is, which is the reason why I did mention I didn't want to refactor these methods yet, but since I thought, why can't I just put them both under one call? In that case, it makes perfect sense to do this. And we can do something similar here. I'm blank. So this would be string, and this would be require not blank as a call. And voila, 
triviality. Then here we cannot any more use the method reference because we also want to input uh, another input, not just the original one. So it wouldn't know what to do with it. So in this case, we want input titled input. And in this case, we expect the input name to be input as opposed to string here. And this takes care of these two assertions, but doesn't take care of this assertion. So now I look at it, it makes kind of little sense that we use, uh, for example, when we're passing in null as a string, we get legal argument exception, but when we're passing anything else, we get a null pointer exception. You could make a case for that, but I think it would be too cumbersome. So why don't we write a method in our require class that also just checks for not null. It would be like this, public static some kind of object t and say not null. And we just pass that object t. For now, ironically, we will return null. <laughs> but we can write some tests for that first. Let's write a test public void not null. Alright, so in this case we'll have a situation similar to this. We wanted to throw an illegal argument exception. We want to call not null. And we want to call just the object, but we actually want it to be null. And in this case it will just be an object, because we don't know what kind of object it is. And it will return null. So that makes sense. I think it does. It doesn't pass the tests. I'll close these so they don't get in the way. And we can just do a simple assertion if t is equal to null. We just throw the legal argument exception, a new legal argument exception with similar pattern as before. Excellent, everything passes. And now we want a similar assertion as here where when we pass not null into any, we return and get the same any. In this case, we don't do that. And when we return t, we do that. Perfect. So what else do we need to do? We need to make sure that we have a similar titled implementation. Uh, not null titled. And we want also the following assertion where we get the null. If we pass not null with a real value, we still get the title object null. Jesus. This won't even compile because we don't have a method such as this, which would take in a title, title. And now we once again can do this. Well, now that we have the method, you could check and see, hey, do the tests fail? And yeah, they do. Okay. That's a good thing. Title, get title, and now the tests still fail. Unsurprisingly, because we haven't asserted on this, which uh, if we still use null pointer exception there, should be this. But as I've said, I think it makes more sense to not do that and instead use a also a legal argument in these kind of cases. That's that's what we're going to do going forward in all of the application. There's a little bit of a mess here still though. There's a lot of duplication uh, and it's still a lot of duplication here as well. Uh, but um, I want to first and foremost, I want to do illegal argument exceptions for both of these, in fact cases since we know they're basically the same you could even refactor this out as assert title not null and the only thing we want to change is if title is legal to null we want to uh, throw an illegal argument exception with invalid Title, oops, title object. Excellent. Right, everything passes, but there's still a lot of 
a duplication around here. So very often we use the same structure for our test. It's basically invalid title condition. Valid title condition. Uh, this can be rewritten as not null. Turn not null t titled. Well, not titled because we don't want to use titled internally. So, do we have any issues going here? Uh, well, what we could do is refactor the assertion somehow and the format of this well exception which isn't particularly difficult i don't think we this is something that will vary from condition to condition so we want to create this as let's call this error description this is a kind of a predicate on t so we can write predicate on t condition and to to fail would be a better condition to fail in this case we will want it to be given some object t is t equal to null object is null so if condition to fail test t we throw the following exception fail if condition on t title t and give the description or should we put the description at the start let's put the description at the start so we know what what we're failing for the condition for it the value of pass and then the title fail if cannot be null does that make sense no that does not actually make sense let's put the error description to the end instead right this this makes sense. fail if object is null t title cannot be null yes very nice we can eat the assertion into this because we're always gonna if, if you look here we're gonna have a very similar condition except it's gonna be on string utils is blank and we're gonna be passing a string into it and this should still work well, let's see if it still works just to be sure it doesn't work right now because we did not change the string description and now it all works so yes all of this works perfectly fine but always fail will go before the assertion so what we can just do is we can eat it into this assertion just to be sure yeah, so now it still should pass all the tests, but now it's much simpler. Can we do something with this? And for example, replace this as fail if? Mm, no, because we would need this to be a separate method in that case. We could make this a separate method, uh, but it's probably not worth it. You might as well just have this one single assertion separately, uh, which doesn't really matter. But now everything is very clear. In fact, we could go as far as return the object itself in this method, and then we don't even need to explicitly return the object here. We just have a simple pass-through call. So uh, not null goes to title object. We fail if title object not blank. Uh, one thing we could do and say, for example, if we wanted to really save some resources, is have this method where we don't assert in the title be not null again. But I mean, let's let's not go crazy. Let's not go crazy. This is fine. This is not out of uh, Ordinary, but it's very nice because now we fail if is blank the title and cannot be blank and all of that is basically encoded in a one quick simple assertion let's see if we cannot now clean up this as a result i predict that we'll have a lot of null assertions as well so we can for the sake of simplicity have an assertion here similar to that assert invalid null t Input, sorry, string 
input name and a throwing consumer of literally anything null averse consumer and it's really just this but we expect the consumer to accept null and null alone and give us null and i believe then we can use this by passing input require not bl blank input now just uh, any and input hmm interesting now it says that uh, the type is wrong argument type yeah i guess in this case i just have to provide the explicit type because it doesn't know what the it's doing may have to provide it always which is annoying but whatever we'll deal with it. this this takes care of that assertion i think that we can now sort of merge these two or i'll turn well no let's clean up the rest of these first because they're still quite messy right i think i've cleaned up all these tests very nicely and now what we should do is merge in my opinion, a much better merge will be between these type of methods. And uh, what I want to do is have three separate tests going like this. So we have the first test, which just asserts require fails without title. Uh, then we have require fails with title. And then we have require succeeds. So this is just a copy. And that's the idea. We have three separate tests, which will go through all the possibilities. Another test for the last of all of that, which would be public void null titles. Into which we will pass in these. And we can put them Right, so now we will have a bunch of collections of assertions that are basically the same thing, but just on a different object. Require succeeds without, without title and require succeeds with title. Hooray! So we have the same assertions, but they're nicely bunched together with the same type of assertions. Even though we're testing different methods, it's not. I, I think this is nicer because if we add another method into the require, we just know that we need to add one line to every single one of these tests with exactly the same kind of thing, just changing this to a different method. Maybe not one line, maybe multiple lines in some cases, but in general, yes, that's all we need to do, which is very nice. All right, unfortunately, the time is up and we only finished this. There is still more, but uh, I guess with that, we finished the require class as far as we need it right now, and we can move on to... Uh, going back to the YouTube channel tests and so on and so forth for the next time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.